the Caliber 8 Tools and DIY channel. 7 o'clock Tuesday. I'm going to wait for some people to come in so I can get started. I don't want to start too early. I hate for people to think that they've missed anything. So let's hang out a while. How's everybody doing, guys? Calibrate Tools and DIY channel sponsored by Calibrate.com, guys. Calibrate.com, where we uh, provide some great products for you. Home improvement products, tools, supplies, and all of that. And one of the greatest ways to support the channel is by going to Calibrate.com, checking out what we have. Okay? Got some great gift items as well. How's everybody doing? I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, it was a holiday for some people, some people yesterday. Um, hope you enjoy that, the extra day off. And, um, yeah, now we're back at it. We're back at it again. And uh, the show must go on, right? It never ends. Never ends. I know this is going to sound kind of morbid, but I think even death doesn't stop the show, right? It's just another chapter, okay? It's just another chapter that uh, that that we finished when we finished this life. What's up, Cali Tool Guy? Hey, Perigirl Life Notes, how you doing? Once again, the ride or die Perigirl Life Notes is in the house. Let's give Perigirl Life Notes a, a shout out, okay? She's been here since day one, and uh, she's a great supporter. And uh, I happen to know Perry Girl Life knows personally as well, okay? And she does a lot of great things out there in the world. You know, she feeds the homeless, um, does a lot of good stuff, even in her profession. She helps a lot of people, and I think that's her calling. I think that's what she was meant, she was put here to do because she does it well. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Perry Girl Life Notes for a second, guys. Okay, so anybody in the replay, uh, remember that. Remember what I said about that, okay? All right, guys, so uh, how's everybody doing once again? I hope you had a great, safe weekend. Um, hope everything well, went, well, went well for you. Maybe some of you guys traveled uh, for the weekend. You got out of the town. Sometimes it's good to get out of town, right, just to take a breather. And, um, you know, it, it's a refresher. I remember... Um, I would get out of town every now and then I'd drive out to the desert or something. And, and I don't know what it is about the, the open spaces and the, the desert air or something like that. The, the scenery, it just kind of cleans you out, you know, it cleans out, it gives you peace of mind and you come back into town and, it, and you just feel refreshed until everything adds up again. So we all need we all need a break sometimes. I get it. We all need a break. I know that that's not what the live is about, but I'm just kind of rambling on, guys, just to wait for more people to come into the chat, have a little conversation there. But let's uh, let's dive right in, guys. Hidden dangers in your home. Believe it or not, as much as you love your home, um, it can be a very, very dangerous place. I mean, people think being out on the street is dangerous. But actually, being in your home could be just as dangerous if you don't pay attention to certain things that can, you know, hurt you or your family, right? Obvious things. We know about sticking your finger in the socket and all that stuff as a kid and getting shocked and all that stuff. We all know about that. But there are other hidden dangers that you don't even think about, right, that, you're, that, that's, that can be very detrimental. Um, for, for, for instance, if you have an older home, you may have lead you may have lead in the walls, you know, um, or lead in your home or something like that. And you hear a lot about that. But I decided to dedicate this live uh, to talking about some of the other hidden dangers that we have in our homes that can really, uh, uh, you know, put our health in, in, in jeopardy or even our lives. Right. Which is our health. Right. Without health, you have you don't have anything. So let's dive right in and see what we can discover about this topic of hidden dangers in your home. So it's you got to make your you got to make your homes as secure as possible. Okay? To save yourself from future headaches. Okay, so let's talk about it. As I was doing the research, I came across some very some pretty good articles about it and uh uh we're going to go down the list of some, okay? And and if some if you can identify with some of these things, which I think most of us can, then it's time to just make it, you know, just jump on them right now and see if you can you can change them. Safety. One of the big 
I, I advocate safety on this channel. And uh, that's a big thing, okay? Especially when you're talking about what I'm talking about, which is tools and fixing things and, and building things and stuff like that. Safety is first. Safety is first. Okay, so let's dive in, guys. Before I dive in, can you guys think of some things already that you know are dangerous that most people don't think about in your homes? Okay. What about shower doors in your bathrooms? We're going to kind of jump around here. You ever got in the bathroom and you have those shower doors that, you know, uh, that are glass shower doors, right? And uh, they look nice and all, but sometimes they swing outside of the tracks, you know, off of the tracks, or they may even come off the tracks. Well, imagine those shower doors coming off the tracks, falling on the floor or inside the bathtub, shattering, and you got glass all over the place. Well, you got a mess, right? Off the bat, you got a mess right there. You can walk, you can step on that glass, you can cut yourself. I mean, all kinds of stuff that can happen there. So shower doors are a big safety hazard. Did you know that? As much as we like our shower doors and how they look and add to the aesthetics of the of the home, the bathroom or whatever, you got to be careful. Those things, are, uh, th those are traps. Those are bombs waiting to go off, right? If you hit them wrong, if you bump into them, uh, knock them off the tracks, get, you know, even if someone's in the bathroom with you and that happens, that's even worse, right? You can hurt them. So, yeah, you got to be careful with your shower doors. They can shatter really, really easily. And, um, yeah, I always, I, I always, every time I get in the tub and I'm going to take a shower, I'm very careful to how I handle those shower doors. I'm not too rough with them because, if you know, that's all it takes is for you to be a little rough with something and off it goes and bam, that's it, okay? These are things we don't necessarily think about. But in the back of your mind, you know that these things, are, that there's a, you can go either way with them, right? Either way with them. Okay, here's no. If you live in colder climates, by the way, guys, you can take notes as well, right? If you live in colder climates and you use electric heaters, if you live in colder climates and you use electric heaters, that's a big, that's a big danger zone right there as well, right? Because all it takes is for you to get on your couch, Nice and cozy with a cup of coffee, cup of tea, reading a book, and you got your electric heater on near close to you or close by the uh, drapes or something like that. And all it takes is for you to fall asleep, right? Fall asleep, and that electric heater is going to touch the drapes or touch something that's flammable, and you wake up in uh, you wake up and your whole house is on fire. That has happened many, many times. That you know, I mean, electric heaters and stuff like that. I've been the cause of so many house fires. So many house fires. It's not even funny. Yeah. Thank you, Prager Life Notes. Appreciate that super sticker. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So, yeah. Electric heaters, guys. Be careful with those things. All right? Be careful with, be careful with them. They can, they can be hazardous to your health. All right. What about your, what about your refrigerators? Right? Uh, as far last time I checked, uh, everybody has a refrigerator, and if you don't, you're pretty. You're, 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 I guess you're a minimalist or something like that. You got your, you got to keep your food in a cooler or something, right? But let's just say you got a refrigerator, you don't keep up with it, you don't maintain it. Well, if you have a faulty refrigerator, and you allow your food to spoil, guess what? That's gonna make everybody sick, and nobody likes being sick. That's one of the worst feelings in the world is to have some kind of stomach problem, stomach infection, stomach because of food poisoning or whatever from something you ate because it's spoiled in your fridge, okay? So your fridge not only keep your, keeps your your your, your uh, food cool and all that um, and keeps them, you know, fresh, but if you don't take care of your fridge, they can actually send you to the hospital, okay? Or send you to the bathroom or something for a couple of days so you got to make sure that your kids, I mean, you, you, your your fridge, I'm sorry, make sure that your fridge is, is, is in good working order. You got to clean the coils out, okay? Make sure you clean the coils out. Make sure the temperature gauge is set at the right temperature, all right, so it won't freeze up and have icicles all over the place, even in the lower regions. Sometimes that's just because the, the dial is not set right, okay? And if you set it too low, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have spoiled food, and you don't want that. Okay, you do not want that. All right, these are simple things we don't may not we don't we, we take for granted. We take for granted these things, but they can really harm us in the long run. Okay, 
All right, what else? Can anybody think of anything else? This is real life stuff, guys. Real life stuff. All right, real life stuff. What else can you think about? How many times have we spilt stuff on the kitchen floor, on the bathroom floor? You you don't clean it up. It's just a little puddle sitting there. All right. Well, slip and falls. We all know about people actually doing slip and falls on purpose in the grocery store to get you know to get money, <laughs> right? But slip and falls happen all the time in people's homes, especially in bathtubs and in the kitchen, right? Where people just, they just don't clean up and it's sitting there and you walk in there and boom, you're gone. Down you go, right? And on the way down, you can, you can hit your head on something. You can really hurt yourself, right? Even in the, even in the shower, right? In the, even in the shower, even in the bathtub, that's almost like a, a, it's a trap sometimes, right? You step in the tub. And it's slippery and you almost lose your foot. How many times has that happened? I know it's happened to me a bunch of times, right? And if you didn't have anything to hold on to, or if you were not quick with your reflexes, you would have been seriously hurt. That's why it's very important, as much as we love our bathtubs, to put a mat down or some kind of uh, grip on the bottom of your tub, okay? Especially for the you know older folks, elderly folks who don't, you know, don't have the balance they used to have or may have some kind of handicap. You know, you may want to put a safety bar inside the bat inside the bathtub. You know, those bars that you can put to the uh, connect uh, attached to the wall, and so you can you know have an extra uh, place to put you know put your hands while you're bathing. It's good to have those. So if you have older people in the house, sometimes if you have kids in the house, young kids, um, yeah, it's good to have these things. Have something on the bottom of your tub so you won't slip. So easy to happen. So easy to happen. Another thing too, if you like taking baths instead of showers, which, you know, I mean, a lot of people like doing that, right? Um, how many people have fell asleep while they're taking a, 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 sitting in the tub, taking a bath with the water almost up to your nose? Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous, guys. Got to watch that. Sometimes you can fall asleep in the tub, slip under the water. Next thing you know, it's like pfft, you're, drink, you're breathing water, and that's that's not a good thing. OK, so, yeah, that 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 bathtub is enticing as it, as it may be, can be very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. here. Virgo Life Notes says electrical cords and liquid. Yeah, I was just about to get to that. Virgo Life Notes. I was just about to jump on that. Sometimes, guys, you may have old wires sticking out of a, a electrical outlet that you didn't even that that was not completed, right? You leave these old these these old wires sticking out. You're gonna fix the socket. You left it alone, and you got this, you know, the old wiring sticking out of there, out of the plug. Um, that wire still has charges in it, right? If you haven't turned electricity off to that part of the house or that part of the system in your house, it's it's live, it's live, and it can it can definitely start a fire. It can spark, and it can definitely shock you. It can shock you. I mean. It, sometimes all this stuff comes down to is, is just laziness, not not caring, being lackadaisical about these little things that, that are around your house that can really cause a problem. OK, so if you have old wires sticking out of, of the wall from somewhere, from the ceiling, from your uh, f uh, smoke alarm or something like that, that you just been ignoring, fix those things, get them out of the way, you know, cap them, cut them off, cap them or something like that. OK, don't have them sticking out. Another thing, guys, um, if you notice inside your kitchen, you have it's it's most of the time it's in the kitchen, right? They have these things called ground fault circuit interrupters, GFCIs. Those are the sockets with the little button on it. You know, they got a button on it, okay? And what happens with the ground fault circuit interrupter is it's pretty much if there's a a, a fluctuation in your current, it shuts it off immediately, right? To to prevent any uh, any uh, electrical issue. So it shuts it off immediately. But if you notice that you have to push the button in, right, all the time, that means that thing is not working correctly, and you, and you probably got to have to get another one. Okay, so you want to check your GFCIs, okay, to see if they're in good working order, and uh, see if the reset buttons are work, you know, are working, right? So you want to make sure that you do that, and uh, because you don't want any issues there. So you can usually find those in your kitchen. 
uh, underneath the cabinets on the backsplash area. You can find those uh, ground fault circuit interrupters over there and uh, make sure they're in good working order. Okay. Like I said before, guys, with your freezer and refrigerator, you want to make sure you monitor those things. Okay. You want to make sure that they're set at the right temperature. I remember a few months ago, my refrigerator wasn't set at the right temperature and it was the freezer was had too much ice in it and the and the bottom part the lower part which is not supposed to have any ice at all had ice in it too right and i was about the i was about to throw the fridge out i was about to throw it out but i realized i just the temperature wasn't set right and once i set the temperature right and i cleaned it out right it was cleaned out um still there still working fine that's all it took, right? I'm getting ready to throw the fridge out, not knowing is that that temperature wasn't set right. So you want to make sure that your fridge temperature, your freezer temperatures are set correctly. So uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, you don't have frostbitten fruit, food in there or, or anything like that. That's something that's all it takes. Okay. Since we're talking about the kitchen, what about your oven? What about your oven, guys? On the oven, most most ovens have these, these oven doors, right? These glass oven doors. And um, a lot of times um, you leave those things open and you bump into them and mess your your, your shins up. You, you hit your shins on those things. Not to mention it's hot and all that. I mean, these. I remember going in the oven many times, many times, not, not wearing the right equipment on my hands, right? I just pull it out real quick, you know, and I burn my hands up. So you got to have the gloves. You have them have the mittens. You know, you ladies know about all that. I'm not trying to say men don't don't get in the oven either, but um, they know you, you guys know what I'm talking about. OK, so, yeah, those oven doors, the glass, they can break as well. They can break, too. So you want to make sure that um, you try to avoid that. OK, you don't want to bang anything on, onto the oven doors. You want to bang pots and pans. You know, you let it slam. You know, you let it go because they have that. That, that tension on them where they'll close by themselves. If you got something in the oven, like a pot or a pan with a big handle or just the pot itself sticking out and everything's jammed in there and that thing closes by itself, it can actually shatter the oven door. All right, so you don't want that. You got to take care of it because you don't want hot glass all over the place or just glass, period. We know this. All right. Now, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, hey, Claudette, how you doing? Glad to see you here. She says, I have those reset buttons in my home and kitchen and bathroom. Yeah, absolutely. They're mostly in, in, in wet areas, Claudette, where the GFCIs are, ground fall circuit interrupters, because that's where water is. And that's that's the most likely uh, where, where things most likely uh, happen electrically, right? If something goes wrong, because if water gets in a, you know, a socket or something, any moist area, ground fall circuit interrupters are there just for that reason. So bathrooms, kitchen, stuff like that. So you want to make sure those reset buttons are working properly and, and all of that. So absolutely. So what else, guys? What else? We talked about oven doors, oven doors. I think every home should have a fire extinguisher around because, I mean, how many times, you know how many people die in a fire, in fires every year? I think I covered that in another live a long time ago. But lots, lots of people, okay? Let's put it like that. Lots of people die in fires. And sometimes it's just for the, the, just neglect, right? Just something. Somebody, I don't know. Somebody fell asleep with the, with the oven on or something like that, or or other, you know, some silly, some silly mistake, right? And um, that's why it's very important, like I said, in my opinion, to have a fire extinguisher on the premises. But what you want, what you don't want to do, is store your fire extinguisher under a sink, right? You don't want to put it under the sink. Why is that? Because leaks from the sink can destroy can destroy your fire extinguisher. You know, once water or moisture gets in that thing, it's, it's done, it's useless, right? So you don't want to store it under a sink, right? You can keep it, you can keep it in your kitchen because that's where a lot of, that's where a lot of fires happen. A lot of times you're cooking, you're not paying attention and everything goes up in flames. You need to put that, put those flames out, but you don't want to keep it under your sink. You can put it by your, you know, next to something like the stove or something like that. All right. Um, what else here? All right, let's let's jump into uh, let's jump into. I did speak on the bathrooms. I talked a lot about the bathroom already. Let's let's talk a little bit more about it. Okay. 
Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, anytime you're running water, you don't want to be, you don't want to have an electrical device around. Now that's common sense, right? Like everybody knows that, duh, right? If you're running water, if you got water around, you don't want to be standing over the sink full of water and you're shaving, you're using an electric shaver or something like that, or you're blow drying your hair with your blow dryer over some water uh, in the sink or running water, period. All it takes is for that thing to fall into the, into the water while you're in contact with it, and that's it for you. That is it for you, okay? Simple things. And these things have killed I mean, these things have killed people or put them in the hospital before, right? I mean, it, it, it has happened. I know it sounds like, oh, that doesn't happen. Yeah, it does happen. Okay, it does happen. People die all kinds of crazy deaths because of uh, silly, 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 silly mistakes, right? Things they shouldn't be doing, right? So, yeah, no standing, no uh, electrical devices being operated around running water, standing water, anything like that. Not a good combination, okay? Electricity and water, not a good combination because you will become the ground, and that's all it takes, okay? Electricity has to go somewhere, and uh, you'll, you'll be the ground in those cases. Um, I, I talked about putting a non-skid mat, okay, in, in your bathroom. Not just in the tub, but you can have one actually on the bathroom floor because the bathroom floor gets mo moist too. How many of us have stepped out of the shower when the floor is wet and we almost slip and we, got, we catch ourselves? Well, sometimes you don't catch yourself, right? Or that thing that you caught, sometimes that doesn't stay in place and, and, and everything. And that's all, you know, that's all it takes, man. That's all it takes. Okay, so it's these little things. And those are just don't just think about yourself. Think about other people, right? Think about your kids. Think about your whoever is in the house with you. You want them to be safe too, right? You want them to be safe. So you need to need to look out for them, right? Go the extra mile if you have to. Get that, get that safety bar attached to the to the wall, the walls of the, the bathtub. Okay, so, so people can have extra grip, you know, in case they slip and fall, right? All right, all right, guys. Talk about shower doors. Here's another one. Here's another. Here's another one about about the bathroom, about the shower. How many of us jumped in the shower? We turn on the shower. It's hot. We almost get scalded to death because <laughs> we jump in too soon. We didn't adjust the temperature uh, quick enough. And uh, we want. Sometimes we want to scream, but you don't want to scream. Sometimes you gotta scream because it's hot and everybody hears you. In the house, the neighbors hear you, everybody hear you because you jump in a, a shower that was too hot. And sometimes it's too cold, right? I mean, a lot of us don't like cold, like cold freezing water like that. So make sure you adjust your temperature, the temperature of your shower water, your bath water before you jump in it. Okay. Some of us think we're just a little too a little too hasty, right? And we just want to jump in and try to adjust it when it's too hot. No, not a good idea. Have a little patience, sit there. And uh, I know you want to get wet and all, but just make sure it's right. Make sure it's just right because you can end up uh, with, uh, I don't know, second, third degree burns uh, just because you were a little impatient, okay? Yeah. Another good thing to do is to, to get one of those shower heads that you can take off of the actual shower and use it as a, you know, it's, it's mobile. You can ha It has a cord and you can just move it around. That's a good, that's a good device to have as well, okay? All right, let's see here. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. All three people watching me, I appreciate you. <laughs> Hope you're getting something from this. Hope you're getting. I know some of this you guys you guys know already, but uh, I like to go over stuff like this every now and then because it's safety. It's always little things that uh, get you. Like I, I work around tools all day, every day, and the minute I say, "Hey, I'm not going to wear gloves," that's when my hand hands get c cut up or. Or, or smashed or something like that or you know the minute you say that that's when it happens right and, and that's all that is is just being lazy right? that you know just being lazy and thinking oh I, I'll get away with it this time no that's the time it's gonna that's the time you're gonna get got that's the time things are gonna happen so try not to be that way I'm trying myself I haven't gotten there yet I'm working on it all right all right guys what else what else what else what else all right how many of us are on this thing all day long? How many of us are on all this thing? This is like the lifeline. Without this today, a lot of people can't go without their phones for like an hour before they start having panic panic attacks. That's how that's how much these devices have become a part of us today. And I think it's a 
and I'm talking about myself as well, right? I think it's a shame that we've gotten to the point where these devices, we got to be we got to be looking at them all the time. Yes, they're very important. Yes, they're very useful. Right? Yes, they're very I mean they're indispensable in many ways, especially if you're running a business today or or just, you know, you got kids, you know, uh you want to make sure they're okay, right? This allows us to be closer to people more than ever before, right? This device right here, okay? The thing about this is this can get you killed as well. I mean, uh, how many of us have been driving and we're, we're texting or we're looking at something and, and not paying attention? That's you know, Cell phones are the cause of of, of so many car accidents. So many, I'm, I'm sure all kinds of accidents, but especially car accidents when your eyes should be on something else, all right? Yes, we do need this, okay? We do need this, but you got to be careful. You got to have some kind of discretion when you're talking about this stuff, these, these, these phones here, okay? Uh, yeah, but back to it, off of the negative side of it, we do need these things, right? I know I need them for, for my daily uh, daily work and stuff like that. So make sure that you, you're not, you know, uh, that this doesn't fall in water, okay? I th um, My phone fell in, like a couple of months ago, it fell in some water. And it sat there, I guess, probably for a good 10 seconds before I knew where it was. And I looked down. It was, a, it was a big old puddle in the back of the shop where I work. Where, when it rains, there's a big puddle there. And I was trying to get somewhere, and it fell out of my, my hand or pocket or something like that. And, went, you know, I was looking around for it, and I saw it sitting underwater, right? Now, this is uh, an iPhone, so it was, you know, it's supposed to be waterproof. and uh, But it, it didn't work for, like, hours. I had to wait till it, dry, it dried out, right? Um, I know there are other ways to dry these phones out when they get wet or submerged in water, but uh, I think I don't know if you can put it in a microwave or something like that. But uh, don't quote me on that, by the way. But um, yeah, um, since we need these things so much, we got to be careful. We got to be careful of you know uh, how we take care of them. Get a case. Get a case for them. This this stuff is falling out of my hands all the time, hitting the ground. I'm like, man, you still working after you know falling like ten times hard on the ground every. Every other day, uh, yeah, that's because it has a case on it. So get a case for your phone so you can take care of it because we do need them as much as they, you know, uh, they can distract us. We do need these things for important stuff as well. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What else we got going on here? Here's another one, guys. Let's talk about when, when we're doing our laundry. How about that? When we're doing our laundry. You know, today they have back when I was coming up, they didn't have these, but now they have them. They have these little packets of detergent, right? They're in the little plastic packets. It's like a bunch of them in a in a, in a package. They call them uh, pods or something like that. Um, yeah, very convenient, right? These these little pods, these detergent pods. I don't know anybody use those detergent pods. Well, if you got little kids, you got to be careful because the kid doesn't know what that is. If you got a toddler or something like that. And you didn't tell them what it is, or you put you didn't put it in a safe place. They'll grab that thing and start eating them. They'll bite into it and ingest all of those chemicals, those detergent chemicals in their system. And it's been, I mean, you talk about uh, you talk about poison. That's what that's exactly what it is, all right? I think it says something like almost ten thousand calls to poison control centers involve children who have ingested or touched. Laundry pods. You don't. You don't even have to ingest it. All you gotta do is touch it. Sometimes rub it against your skin. It it has a caustic effect on your skin, right? Imagine ingesting that. No good. So yeah, it's 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 almost like rat poison to a kid, right? So if you if you use those detergent pods, even detergent itself, right? But especially the pods because they are they're attractive. The kids, they're attractive to kids who think they're something that they, I don't know. They look like candy, I guess, because the way they're wrapped and they're round and stuff like that. And they want to bite into it and eat it, eat it, right? You know, kids eat everything when they're young. They just want to pick it up and put it in their mouth. So you got to be careful with those laundry pods, okay? If you want your kids to be safe, don't just leave them laying around, especially if you have your kids doing laundry with you, right? Or if you, you know, if you just leave them around and your kids are roaming the house or whatever, they pick it up and eat it. And they start, and then you walk in there, and your kid's laid out, passed out, or choking, and you don't know why. Is because, well, look, look what you left around, right? We got it's almost like leaving a gun, leaving a leaving a loaded gun around kids. Right? You, 
you can't do anything but blame yourself on that, right? So we sometimes we got to think these things have chemicals, very dangerous chemicals in them, right? And they can they can really hurt hurt you, hurt you, hurt your kids, right? And even if they they come out of it, they can it can leave permanent damage. It can leave co cognitive uh, damage, um, brain damage in some cases, right? So be careful with those laundry pots, okay? Those detergent pots, guys. All right. So what else? What else we got going on here? <laughs> furniture, furniture, furniture. As much as we love our furniture, I'm talking about dressers, bookcases. You know, you know, uh, I like I like books. You know, so in my in my uh, my humble abode, I have a tall bookcase, right? A bunch of books. Um, TVs, you know, TVs hanging on the walls today. We don't even, we don't put them on a on a, a stand like we used to. We like to hang them on the walls today. All of that. Uh, even the kids, they, they got TVs hanging on the walls today. I mean, they got it made today, right? Got everything at their fingertips. Our kids today, man, young kids today got it made, man. All right? But these, these this this furniture, right, can be very dangerous if they're not secured. If they're not secured to the wall, if they have heavy items on them, right? And I live in earthquake. I, I live in earthquake country, right, here, here on the West Coast. So all it takes is is for, for something to shake and that heavy bookshelf come falling down and crashing down on you or your kid. I'm sure there have been some really, really sad cases in the world where that has happened and somebody, a kid, has probably lost their life, maybe even an adult, depending on how it hits them. If they hit them on the head in the right way, that's it, right? Things you would never, never suspect could happen. Freak accidents happen all the time. I remember when I was a kid, I was by the stove, and somehow the hot water on the stove fell onto my head, burned all of this up right here. That's why I don't have any hair right now, see? So I had to, you know, kind of, <laughs> no, seriously, it did burn a good um, portion of my head here, right? Um, yeah, freak accidents, you know? Um, so we got, you got to watch out for your for your uh, your furniture, and are they, if they're going to be tall, taller than you, if you're six feet or, or taller, and they have books on them or whatever, heavy items or, you know, even some lighter items. Um, they can fall, right? They can tip over. They can be knocked over, right? And uh, really fall on you or somebody else and hurt somebody, right? And that's and that has happened. Happens all the time. So I think it says about 20,000 people. Uh, in, in the in, It says from 2017's. 2009 through uh 2019 an average of about 20,000 people went to the ER for injuries related to furniture tip overs that's a lot of people so don't think it doesn't happen or don't think it just hap it, it, it just you know happens like very rarely no it happens it says between 2000 and 2019 351 people were reported killed in tip over incidents killed guys lost their lives in their home, just relaxing, right? They didn't go out there and get shot or get ran over by a car. They got killed because their furniture fell on them. That's something that could have been prevented, right? So if you're going to move into a new home to save your life and save your uh, who was ever in the home with you that you care about, uh, I would think that you have if you have somebody in your home you care about them, except for like a, a salesman or something. <laughs> Nothing wrong with sales, but I like sales. Um. The reason I like sales, I don't kind of off topic because I feel it's my obligation. I feel it's my obligation to offer you something that I think is going to improve your life. All right. So in my mind, I'm not selling you. I'm helping you. So anyway, back back to the topic. Yeah. 351 people were reported killed in tip over incidents in the span. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a 20 year span. And you may say, OK, if you. Uh, extrapolate that over 20 years that's not a lot of people well that's, that's a, it still happens you know it, it happens even if it was just one person that, that's enough to say okay that can happen to me let me let me get up and walk around my house and see what's what i have that's tall and heavy that i can secure better just in case something happens right never know so there's more than eleven thousand adults are in injured every year by tip overs that's yearly. That's on a yearly basis, guys. Injured by tip-overs, okay? So um, 
Yeah. Furniture. As much as we love our furniture and our expensive furniture and China and uh, and China cabinets and all this stuff. Um, yeah, those things can be uh, uh, the Grim Reaper right in your house if you're not if you're not careful. So make sure they're secured. What I would do is I would how I, how would I secure something like that? I'd probably take a uh, some brackets, right? Um, I'd probably take some brackets, some some L brackets, and attach them to the bottom of the of the um, uh, the cabinet. Put a screw in that and the bottom part, and then put a screw in the wall, and position it by some studs. Okay, position it by some studs in the wall. If you don't know where the stud is, get a stud finder to find out where the stud is, and take an L bracket and put a screw in the L bracket and against the cabinet, and then put the other uh, screw in the uh, again inside the stud in the wall. Screw it into the wall. That should help. Give you a little bit more peace of mind. You know, a little more peace of mind. Because you may not have kids running around, you may not care, but what if you have family that bring kids over or somebody, you got visitors and stuff like that, you don't, you know. All right, enough of that. I think you guys got the point on that. Oh, uh, just what I said, just what I said. Uh, you know, I was looking at the list here and that, you know, you want to anchor it to your wall, right? You want to anchor this stuff to your wall. All right says don't use drywall anchor anchors or toggles they pull out too easily so you want to you don't want to use those all right well I, I'd probably use some big wood screws that's probably what I would use okay what else here what else here same thing with the TVs guys the TVs that you got mounted on the wall all right you want to make sure those are secured as well okay I've mounted a couple TVs in my day. Um, always make sure those things are secured and on, and on the studs, not just on the bare drywall, because they'll come out. They'll come right out of that drywall. Okay, so make sure you, you find the studs and you mount them there. All right, we talked about heaters, especially if you live in colder climates or you like, you know, like here out on the West Coast, it's hot during the day, but at night it gets cold. Sometimes it gets really cold at night, okay? Um and a lot of people like to break out the heaters and stuff like that. I'm not really a heater guy. I just you know, I'll jump under the covers, throw the blanket over me, and I'm good. But a lot of people like to use heaters. You know, there are rules to using heaters. Did you know that 17,000 house fires and 80 deaths are tied to portable heaters on a yearly basis? Yeah. That, that same thing that you want to keep you nice and warm, that's the same thing that will take you out. Okay? That's the same thing that will take you out. Okay? So you got to. You gotta um you gotta know the rules when it comes to heaters. You gotta know the rules, guys. All right. What are some of the rules when it comes to heaters? All right. First of all, you want to keep them on a hard floor, right? With you don't want to put them on the carpet because that's flammable, right? So if you got carpet, you want to make sure that you cut if you're gonna keep your heater there, you want to cut that part out of that part of carpet out of the floor. So you put your heater on there. All right. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to leave it in a child's room because they they're not gonna know what to do with it right they're not gonna know the rules so you don't want to leave a heater in a child's room all right don't don't ever leave it unattended either if you got a heat if you gotta if you're gonna have a heater on I mean I, I know it's, you, you got to turn it off if you're gonna leave the room right but you can't leave these things unattended you just can't trust them you don't know what's gonna happen right um, it says keep them three feet away from bedding curtains and other flammable or combustible material so you got to keep them just common sense right why would you put a heater right next to your curtains right it's going to go up in flames it's going to get hot even if it doesn't get hot right away it's heating up it's heating up and then while you're sleeping right and never never land that thing's going to burst into flames and yeah, it's just going to be a big mess okay so you don't want to you want to keep them three feet away all right at least at least three feet away from anything flammable okay you got a heater, you want to make sure it's in good working condition. Check the cords, no frayed wires or nothing like that. Okay, and you might consider getting a, a GFCI, a ground fall circuit interrupter. Okay, to use with it, right? So, and if there's a surge or something happens with the heater, it'll automatically cut off that current from that heater. Okay, so yeah, just little things like that, guys. Check the ratings on your heater too, see if they're, um, uh, 
they're properly rated for what you want. All right. What else, guys? What else? Here are some common things. Make sure that you got, you know, if you, in, in your in your in your home space, make sure you got good lighting. Make sure you got good lighting, right? Um, trips and falls happen all the time, right? I talked about slip and falls earlier, but you know, a lot of times people trip and fall, right, uh, because of bad lighting, right? I mean, I know I have done it. How many of us have stubbed our toes in the middle of the night because we didn't want to turn the light on? One of the most painful experiences you can ever ever have is to stub your toe. I'm not just talking about a little stuff. I'm talking about you're you're taking those wide strides and thinking you know where knowing where you're going in the, in the middle of the night and it's dark. But yeah, you say, man, I know my house. I don't need the lights on. Bam! <laughs> I and mean, you 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 you're you're in a ball. You're you're down on the ground in a ball of pain because uh, you were too confident. Turn the light on. Turn the light on. See where you're going. Good safety. Uh, good safety tip there. Never hurts, right? Um, or just plug in some night lights. I have some night lights on. You don't have, you know. Um, some people like night lights all over the place, right? How many people know people like that that, that have night lights all over the place? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's definitely a safe way to safe way to be. I tell you, visibility. Stay stable. Stay stable, guys. So if you go, if you got a two story house or whatever, you want to put some. Uh, you may want to put something on the stairs, like that's some grip or something to. Help you stay stable while you're going up and down those stairs. All right. Sometimes those some carpets are, they they slip easily on hardwood flooring or any kind of wood wood surface. So uh, you don't want to fall fall uh, down the stairs because you you had a you didn't have the right grip on your stairs. And once again, it's not about you, right? It's about others as well, right? Not I should say it's not just about you. It's about others, right? Um, that you want to think about too. But yeah, I remember walking on floors where the rug just slips like wooden floors where the rug just slips and, and it's like, man, what's that's a, you know, I, I would have done better not even having the rug there. It's like the rug is worse than just, just the bare wood because the rug slips on the floor and you down you go. I'm sure some of us can relate to that. All right. All right. Um, here's another thing. What about those um, curtain cord, the cords, you know, the cords for your curtains? You know, some of these cords, that, whether it's electrical cord, whether it's a curtain cord, um, they can uh, actually, uh, a kid or even a pet, right? Even a pet can get tangled up and choke on those cords, right? Uh, so you may want to find ways to get the cords out of the way. They have cordless window coverings. Um, they have, you know, all kinds of cordless, uh, cordless um, I don't want to say devices, but cordless, I don't know, okay, say devices that can uh, really eliminate that risk, right? Eliminate that risk uh, because cords are, are another reason, okay, that uh, people end up in the hospital, right? Getting choking on cords or pets or, or kids or something like that. They got, we got these cords laying around and not knowing that they're a, they're a health hazard, okay? Um, if you got a fireplace, make sure you got a fire screen around that fireplace. Okay, because those the crackling fire just pop popping out those little embers can start start fire. Okay, so you wanna you wanna make sure that that you uh, protect your house from that. All right, protect protect that area from those from that fire that you like to light on Christmas or those holidays or just snuggle up uh, uh, in front of the fireplaces. Or you know, make sure that. Uh, you know that there's a risk as well, okay? So get a fire screen. That's what they got them for, all right? All right, guys. Uh, let me see here. Claudette says night lights. Yeah, Claudette. Uh, yeah, night lights are very important, very important. Some people have night lights all over the house. Yeah, they're, they're like night lights, night life, uh, night light, uh, night light people. I'm going to leave it that way. But um, yeah, very, very good, um, very good strategy. You know, you, it protects you from stubbing your toe. You can see, you know, if somebody, you know, you can, you just got more visibility. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid to invest in night lights. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of these tips uh, to keep your home safe. And um, 
you know, for not just for you, but like I said, for anyone who, who happens to visit your home or live in the home with you, family, friends, stuff like that. Freak accidents happen all the time, um, whether you know it or not. They're not as rare as you think. And all it takes is one time. Okay. And uh, so I hope you guys got something from this and feel free to share it with some people, you know, right. Everybody, if you know, somebody has a home, which I'm sure all of us do feel free to share this live, share it with them, hit that like and subscribe, button. make sure everybody gets this. All right. That's what I'm on here for. I make sure that I do safety videos every so often because I think it has to be stressed, right. Especially if you're going to be doing the things that I'm teaching you guys how to do on the channel or using the type of equipment safety first. Okay. Safety first. Don't get too excited. Make sure you're safe. Anyway, guys, appreciate you. Very good life notes. Thank you very much for supporting Claudette. Always thank you for coming on and supporting as well. And uh, for anybody in the replay seeing this, um, thank you as well. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.